So a log is to be cut into a rectangular section for use as a simply supported beam. If the allowable bending stress for the wood is 56 megapascals, determine the largest load P that can be supported if the width of the beam is 200 millimeters and the depth of the beam is 566 millimeters. So to start this off, the equation that we're gonna to need to fill in is the equation for the maximum bending stress, which looks like this. Oop, max. Okay. So with respect to the maximum bending stress, we're given a limit of 56 megapascals, so that's already filled in. This maximum moment needs to come from a bending moment diagram, which we'll draw in a second. And the other two, y max and i, are going to come from looking at the cross section. So I'm going to start with looking at the moment. And remember that the starting point for this is to draw your free body diagram, find the reactions, then you can draw the shear force and find the bending moment diagram to read off the maximum moment. So let's start with the free body diagram. So this is my beam, and we're told that we have a point load in the center, P. And it's simply supported, which tells us that we've got a reaction force on either end. Okay, so looking at this, because it's symmetric, what we'd expect is that half of this load would be taken on the left, and half of this load would be taken on the right. So that would make each of the reactions P on 2. If you want to prove that, you can go ahead and apply your equilibrium equations, so summing the moments to be zero and then summing the forces to be zero as well. So I'm going to leave it at that and move on now to drawing the shear force diagram. So, following the forces as we move across the beam, at the beginning we're forced up P on 2. Nothing happens through this section. So it's going to remain flat. Till we get to the center, we're forced down a value of P. So P on 2 minus P takes us to negative P on 2. Keep going across until we get to the end because there's nothing happening. This final force pushes us back up to 0 because negative P on 2 plus P on 2 is 0. So that's our shear force diagram. Now we need the bending one because this is where we're going to be able to read off our maximum moment. So, we've got no couples applied to our beam, so all we need to worry about is the areas inside the shear force diagram. So, at the beginning of our diagram, we're on the positive side of the shear force diagram, which tells us that our bending moment diagram is going to go upwards. Because it's flat here, we should see a diagonal line on the next diagram. So, it should look something like this. And we can find the maximum value. It's equal to the total area in here. So, that's going to be P on 2 for the height of the rectangle multiplying by the width of the rectangle, which corresponds to this distance in here, okay, of 2.4 meters. So we get a maximum value of 1.2p. Now, to complete the diagram, what we're going to see is this is now on the negative side, so it's going to pull us back down. And because there's nothing else, it should pull us back down to zero, but you can check. It's going to be where we started, which was 1.2p minus the area in here which is p on 2 multiplied by this length it was simply supported the distance was the same on either side so 2.4 which is equal to 0 so this is our complete um, bending moment diagram so the reason that we've gone ahead and drawn this is because we want to be able to find the maximum moment in our system and we're interested in the absolute value of it so the biggest number that we can possibly get is this 1.2p, it's the peak of our diagram. So that's what needs to be substituted into our equation for bending stress um, for the maximum moment. So scrolling back up, what we need to work on now is finding y max and i, and this relates to looking at the cross section. So it tells us that we're going to cut this wooden log into a rectangular shape. So let's draw that now. And we're given dimensions, we're told that B, the width, is going to be 200. And we're told that the depth of it is um, 566.
So we need to figure out where our neutral uh, plane lies so that we're able to draw it onto this diagram and then me measure the biggest distance we can possibly get away from it. So our neutral plane, remember, wraps through the centroid of our shape. So the centroid of the rectangle is going to sit here and it's going to wrap around. So you can imagine if this was then turned into like the 3D view, something like this. Okay, so this view is the view on the end here. That's the centroid. It wraps like this around. Okay. So on our picture, which is just looking at this view, it's going to go straight through. So now we need to figure out the maximum distance that we can possibly get away from this neutral plane. So if you try to go upwards, you're going to be able to go half the distance of 566. If you go downwards, you're going to be able to go half the distance of 566. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, you're going to get the same number. So the maximum y value that we can possibly get is 566 on 2, half the height of the beam. And this corresponds to be 283 millimeters. So the other parameter that we need is I, the second moment of area, and you can go ahead and read the equations um, for the standard shapes off tables. So if you go ahead and look that up, I for a rectangular cross section with the axis going through the centroid is equal to BD cubed on 12. So B corresponds to this distance here, D corresponds to this distance here, the height of the beam. So substituting in, if we do it in um, millimetres, it's going to be 200 by 566 cubed divided by 12. And we come out with an I value of 3.022 by 10 to the 9. And we subbed it in in millimetres, so the units are millimetres to the power of 4. So we've now got everything that we need to be able to go ahead and use this equation. So let's come down here. Oops, sorry. So substituting in, we know that the maximum moment that we're aiming for um, was given in the question. It was equivalent to 56 megapascals. Sorry, maximum stress. So I'm going to sub this in in base units, so it's going to be 56 by 10 to the power of 6. The maximum moment we have as 1.2p, remembering that p is the load that we're going to determine. Y max, is, we worked out to be 283 millimeters. Again, I'm going to sub it in in base units, so that becomes 0 0.283. And finally, we need to take account of the I value. So it's 3.022 by 10 to the 9. It's currently in millimeters to the 4th. So if I want to convert this into meters to the 4th, I need to multiply by 10 to the negative 3 to go from millimeters to meters. And then because my unit is to the power of 4, my conversion also needs to be raised to the power of 4. So we're left with this equation where the only unknown is P inside it. So you can rearrange for p, and it comes out to be about 798332. Um, it's going to come out in the base units. So if you want to then convert it, because it's quite a large number, you can convert it, say, to kilonewtons, and it's going to be divided by 1,000, so 498 would be the answer. So that's all there is to this question. We've determined that that um, force um, applied in the center is what you get um, for when you're designing for a 56 millimeter, sorry, megapascal um, beam, and you've got fixed um, cross section um, as shown. So that's all there is, and see you in another video.